Hi, it's Terry here at D-Lab, and this is a quick tech tip to help you guys avoid getting shocked while you're working on these old vintage tube amplifiers. Here we go. Well, I'm sure you've seen numerous videos out there warning you of discharging your filter caps before you get your hands into these old tube amps. Now, this Showman is running at 455 volts. Now, that 455 volts will stay there even if I turn off the power. For a short period of time, it is there, okay? Now, I'm going to turn the standby back on, and you can see it jumped up and went back down. It's because the standby is trying to break that high voltage. However, the caps are still charged, and the potential is still in the amp. So I'm going to give you some quick tips on how to avoid getting blasted by that high voltage. I'm sure you've seen in many videos the old alligator clip with a resistor trick, right? You go to ground, you touch the filter caps, and you discharge them. Then you take your meter later and verify that there's zero volts and the amp is safe to work on. Well, that's a two-step procedure. I'm going to show you an easy way to do it in one step and also eliminate the possibility of you coming in contact with that high voltage. So obviously you're going to take your voltmeter, you're going to connect your negative to chassis, and then your positive, you're going to go through and verify that the voltages are dead, right? Well, wouldn't it be cool is at the same time that you're checking those voltages that your meter would dissipate it. Well, here's a simple way to do it. This is one of those little banana jack stackers, okay? You can buy these for next to nothing. So these two prongs plug into your meter. Now remember, it has to be a standard meter with three quarter inch spacing, all right? Then you plug your meter leads in here. But what the cool part is, is you can parallel a little resistor right in here, right? There's some set screws down in there. So you can insert your resistor, tighten them up, pop in your leads, and now, Every time you use your meter, you are injecting this load, which will discharge the caps. Let's give it a shot. All right, so this does have a little ground tab indicator, right? So good practice. Pop your common, put it in the little ground tabber. Your positive goes there, and you plug it in. In case you're wondering, the resistor I have here is a 22K at 2 watts, all right? Now you may say, man, if you have 450 volts, you're going to draw a lot more current than that wattage is capable of handling. Well, remember, it's instantaneous, right? And it won't actually be at 450 volts. It'll probably be at around 50. All right, so here we go. I'm going to fire the amp back up. Now obviously, we're not seeing the voltage right now because I don't have my probe connected, okay? Now you're getting ready to do maintenance in here. You want to make sure she's dead. Kill just the power switch, leave your standby switch on, okay? I'm going to show you your reason for that later. Now we're going to take our meter, pop him in, and you can see the voltage was already pretty much discharged. And that is typical on this type of amp, but some amps will hold a charge for a long time at a high potential, okay? And of course with the resistor across there acting as a load, when you hook up your meter, it's not going to spark like if you were to just take a ground wire and touch it and go snap. I've seen a lot of people do that. I do not agree with that way of discharging filter caps. So now you can see that your main cap is discharged, but you should take your meter and dance down the board, especially in the area that you're gonna be working on and make sure that all the filter caps have discharged. So why did I say to leave that standby switch on but of course turn off the main power switch. Well, that is because the standby switch, its purpose is to break the high voltage that is going to your tubes, right? So that your filaments will stay on, yet the high voltage is off. So if you go in here to discharge your amp and the standby switch is off, you're not gonna be connected to the filter caps. So you have not eliminated the shock hazard. Now, I'm going to cut to this new Fender Vibrolux schematic, and I want you to take a close look at this schematic. Take a look where their standby switch is. They actually put it on the negative side of the filter caps. That is a huge shock risk, okay? 
because if you have your standby switch off, obviously there's no way you're going to be able to discharge those capacitors, okay? And it's going to fool you if you have your meter hooked to the chassis and you're looking around to make sure the high voltage is dead with that standby switch off because those caps have no path to discharge. A very bad situation. I do not know how many of the fenders are set up like that, but if you're working on a Vibrolux like that, be very careful. Well, there you have it. A combined tech and safety tip from D-Lab Electronics. When you're working on this old vintage gear, you don't want to take shortcuts, you don't want to get in a hurry and get popped by 455 volts. Believe me, it doesn't feel good. I've had it happen to me and I've done this stuff for a long time, all right? So invest the dollar, buy that little banana jack adapter that I showed you, get your resistor in there, and now you have a really nice controlled method for discharging the capacitors in your amp. Pop that baby in, you got the visual, you know that circuit's dead, it's safe to work on, right? So take the time, do it right, guys. D-Lab's here for you.